In the previous video we looked at different ways to bake nav mesh surfaces. In this video we will look at nav mesh links to get AI characters jumping, how to bake a nav mesh surface onto vertical surfaces such as walls, linking multiple nav mesh surfaces together, dynamically updating a nav mesh surface for opening doors, scripting to add conditions when an AI character loses sight of a target. If you want to follow along with this video, ensure AI Navigation version 2 is installed from the Package Manager along with the samples. We will also be using assets which you can download from the links in the video description below. NavMesh links are used to connect gaps between NavMesh surfaces, allowing characters to either walk or jump between them. In the jump area scene, in the block out scene folder, I have added the Ellen character from the 3D game kit. I don't want this ground plane to be walkable, so I'll add a nav mesh modifier and check to override and choose not walkable as the area type. Add a new nav mesh surface and bake. If you notice that some of the jump squares are not covered in blue, then go to advanced and reduce the minimum region amount, perhaps to 0.5 and rebake. Now to allow the character to jump between the squares, go to Game Object, AI and Nav Mesh Link. Move this close to Ellen and rotate in the direction you want the character to move. Click on the first endpoint to move it to where you want the jump to start from. When the point makes contact with the Nav Mesh surface a blue circle appears. If it is not connecting the blue circle disappears. It needs to connect on both sides for a jump to occur. Position the endpoint where you want the jump to finish. Now add more nav mesh links to allow the character to jump between the squares from one side to the other. You have the option to have the nav mesh link be bi-directional so you can travel across it in both directions or by checking this, turn it into a single direction link only. This can be useful where you don't want a character to return from the direction they came from. The direction of the link can be swapped, in this case leading from Ellen's starting position to the first jump point. Ellen should have the click to move script found in the samples and scripts folder. This has been modified to include running and idle animations which have been added to her animation controller. During play mode we see Ellen is now able to move along all the gaps, however she is not yet jumping. In the samples AI navigation folder there is a script called agent link mover that can handle the jumping motion for the character. Drag this onto Ellen. It has four methods. A teleport where the character teleports from the start position to the end position, normal speed which acts just as the character walking, parabola which is the jump effect, or curve where you can define a custom curve. We will use parabola. In the animator for Ellen I have added a jump animation with a ball called in jumping state, which is true from the transition from any state to jump and false for the transition from jump to run. We can edit the agent link mover script. Remove the agent variable, as we will declare it outside of the start method. Add animator and agent variables and get the components in the start method. In the parabola I enumerator add animator set ball of in jumping state to true. This will play the jumping animation as the character begins to jump when on the nav mesh link object. We need to reset the jump, create an update method and check if the agent is not on the off mesh link which is the nav mesh link object. This lets us know that she has finished jumping. Set the animator ball of in jumping state to false to return to a run. The height of the jump can be adjusted in the start method for the parabola coroutine. This second condition is the jump height. I will reduce this to 1 for a smaller jump height. Now during play mode the character plays the jump animation and returns to run at the end. In the room scene I have placed a chomper character from the 3D game kit onto a wall. I need to bake a nav mesh onto a vertical surface so the chomper can walk along the wall. I have created a new agent type for the chomper. These values will be used to bake the nav mesh surface. Create a new nav mesh surface object. Under collect objects change to volume. We can see the green y axis pointing up. The nav mesh surface uses the up axis to define the angle of objects. At the moment the wall is at a 90 degree angle. Rotating the object now has the y axis parallel to the wall. So the wall is now at 0 degrees. This allows us to bake a surface onto it. I'll set the size to match the wall and ensure the volume is intersecting the wall surface. You can select Chomper as the agent type. 
Now click Bake and there is a walkable nav mesh surface on a vertical wall. Ensure the character's nav mesh agent is set to Chomper as this matches the agent of the wall surface. Create a new nav mesh surface and bake for the humanoid character. We can see the nav mesh surface as a gap at the door. The character will not be able to enter the room even when the door is open. The nav mesh surface cuts holes for all static objects such as this cube. Even if I move the cube, the hole remains. For dynamic objects that are expected to move, we can add a nav mesh obstacle component. Check the Carve checkbox and uncheck Carve Only Stationary if the object is expected to move. Now after rebaking, the cube can be moved and the nav mesh hole moves with the cube. If the object is destroyed, the hole in the nav mesh surface disappears. Add a nav mesh obstacle component to the door and rebake. Now to rotate, ensure it is set to pivot. As the door opens, the nav mesh surface connects with the room, allowing characters to enter the room only when the door is open. The Chomper character is following Ellen. When she enters the room, it will lose sight of her. We want Chomper to return back to his starting position after he loses sight of her. In the previous video, we created an AI target script, which we now need to modify. Add variables to store a Vector3 starting point and a ball to calculate a path. In the start, set the starting point to the character's initial position. In the update, when the agent is following the player, check if the agent does not have a path. This checks if the agent is able to reach the target along the path of the nav mesh surface it is following. We will also ensure this runs on a single frame by adding the path calculate ball to true. The agent cannot reach the target, so it travels back to its starting position. The path calculate ball is reset to false. As soon as the agent does have a path, the agent's destination is set to the target's position. The path calculate ball is set to true. During play mode, we see the chomper following the player along the wall, but when she is no longer reachable, the chomper goes back to its starting position. When the player moves back into focus, it begins chasing her again. If a nav mesh surface is created where the step height is set to zero, we would need another nav mesh surface to cover the steps. You can add multiple nav mesh surface components to the same object. For this bake, ensure the humanoid character has a step height. I will bake based on the volume, adjusting it to match the size of the steps. Notice you can't move the object, as that would affect the existing nav mesh surface. Instead, move the volume using the size and center options, or the edit volume button. Now when this is baked, it covers the steps. At the moment, the character will not be able to move from one nav mesh surface to the other. Create a nav mesh link object and position it to combine the two nav mesh surfaces. The character will now be able to walk from one surface to the next. The width of the nav mesh link can be increased to three, so it matches the width of the steps, allowing the character to access the steps at any point across its entire width. One of the reasons you may want to use this method is to switch a nav mesh surface on or off to restrict character movement in a scene. Let's imagine a player can only climb these steps when she is granted access, perhaps by completing certain tasks somewhere else in the scene. Create a new script called Step Script. Add a nav mesh surface array to store the nav mesh surfaces. Add a ball called Av Access, which is set to false to begin with. In the start method, get all nav mesh surface components from this object. We only want to affect the second nav mesh surface. The first has an index of 0, the second has an index of 1. We will use enabled equals false to switch it off to begin with. Then in the update, check if av access is equal to true. We will check if the nav mesh surface at index 1 is switched off. If it is already switched on, the next line of code will be ignored. We will then switch on the nav mesh surface at index 1. During play mode, the nav mesh surface on the steps is switched off. Even if we click on the steps, the player cannot climb them. When Av Access becomes true, the nav mesh surface is switched on and the player can now climb the steps. In the next video, we will look at spawning in layouts and dynamically creating nav mesh surfaces during runtime. How to check when an agent has reached its destination for a turn-based game setting area costs and adding AI randomness for multiple characters. For more information see the link in the video description below. 
Thanks for watching.